Welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and today I wanted to share some things that I've been knitting recently, some things that are currently on my needle and also uh, some new yarns that I'm really excited about to cast on some new projects with. So get prepared for lots of knitting inspiration. This is definitely the time of year where I want to knit a lot of really warm, fuzzy things because here in Finland it is winter, uh, we've got lots of snow outside and uh, the thing that I am, where we maybe can start, <laughs> is uh, I'm wearing currently my cinema sweater. This is the third one I made, so I've done three cinema sweaters all in all. Uh, and I did a full tutorial that you can find here on my YouTube channel. So I did first one in gray, which is this one, which I knitted from Knitting for Olive with their merino in pearl gray. And then I did also one in a dark navy blue, and this was in Sun as Garn. Uh, Sunday but I held it double and I've been wearing these so much and also this one this last one where I held a uh, hand-dyed merino from Madeleine Torch together with brushed alpaca from uh, Drops and yeah it's just like a really simple and basic kind of a bit oversized uh, sweater and in the pattern I included three different lengths so you can kind of customize it um, at the moment what I'm knitting uh, that I'm <laughs> have here on my needles is another little hood. So last year I knitted the Grandma Core hood, um, or I think it was this year, but it was in winter. Um, and I wanted to do one with a bit more dense fabric. So this one has this honeycomb stitch, or I think it has like lots of different names, but I'm calling it honeycomb stitch. And um, this one is, well, it's not completely done yet, as you can see. <laughs> And I made this so it's open. So instead, when you put it on, that you don't have to put it like over your head. And now, well, now my hair is kind of silly because I can't really show it to you. But um, so you instead then fasten it here with these little snaps. And the coolest thing of them all is I'm making these really long straps and like wide straps. And the idea is that you can then make this huge bow. Um, so I'm really, really excited about that. I'm calling it the Cozy Coco Hood for some reason. Uh, I just feel like this is very cozy. And then the word cocoa, I don't know, like this honeycomb, this stitch kind of reminds me a little bit of coconuts. Cozy cocoa, thought it had that nice ring to it. So I'm really excited. I think I'm gonna be able to finish this today. Oh, I could just feel <laughs> the baby kick. It's really funny. Um, like in the past couple of days, I have felt the baby's movements in my belly. Uh, like I'm now approaching the end of my second trimester um, like the movements are really different like I've felt kicks before but now I can feel he's sort of moving around uh, in different ways so it's just really funny when I can feel it and speaking of uh, baby and baby knits so I thought I would try to make a, a second one of this uh, cozy cocoa hood in a baby size because I think babies they like need wear a lot of hats because like a lot of heat apparently uh, otherwise dissolves through their head so they need to have like small hats so I thought maybe in a super wash merino I would make a smaller version uh, definitely in a version where I wouldn't have for this one I've used alpaca and then this alpaca silk from Knitting for Olive and this one was from Viking Garn I think um, but definitely I would make a version without any silk mohair. So really excited about that one. Okay, um, I'll show you another red knit. So I usually don't, I don't think I've ever knitted anything. Oh no, as, like in my 20s I knitted something with the color red in it, but never something in just fully red. So I have another one um, that I'm working on. This is a cable knit just a top-down raglan and I got this vision because I bought, I was in Stockholm last uh, week and I bought this really nice like sequin golden uh, dress which has like a stretchy <laughs> band so I can wear it with my belly and I thought 
how cool it would it be as a Christmas maybe Eve outfit if I could finish this red cable knit and then I could wear it together with my sequin skirt. So that is what I'm trying to go for, but I have a few other projects that I want to first complete, but this is knitted with Borstet Alpaca by Samizgarn, um, one of my absolute favorites. I knitted this summer this darling cardigan and also in Borstet Alpaca. Uh, and this darling cardigan you might have seen already here on my channel. Um, I made a tutorial for it where I knitted it in the color green as well. Um, this one I really, really love and I added some buttons to it. And then I also had um, a sample knitter called Elisa. She knitted uh, it in gray and then I added these really blingy diamond buttons and I just love it. Like that little detail just makes this cardigan. Um, and this one is knitted in Sanes Garn Kors, so it's like this kind of uh, blown alpaca yarn. So that's the Darling Cardigan and I have a full video tutorial for it here on my YouTube channel that you can check out if you're interested. For this one, I don't have a name yet. I'm not sure what to call it. And I'm already uh, dreaming about making also a cardigan with this because I really like how these cables, they're quite simple, but I just really love the texture they produce. They're not too... Um, sometimes I feel like with cables, they can produce like a really three-dimensional stitch that can become a little bulky. But for this one, I feel like it's quite flat which I kind of uh, like. Um, and yeah, the color is also just really nice. It's called Poppy, I think, this red color. So even though red isn't my usual color, um, yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit playful with wearing different colors. So very excited to finish this. Yeah, try to get it before Christmas. I think I still have time. There's like four weeks until Christmas Eve. So I think I can do it, but probably the pattern won't be released until January or early next year. Let's see. <laughs> okay, the next project I'm going to show you, I have already shown um, in my last video where I was in Portugal. I've not really made any progress since then because uh, I've been working on different things. Um, but this cable knit, so this is a V neck cable knit. And this one I am using oh, two strands of Filcolana Arvetta, which is a really, it's quite of a thin. Um, merino. It has a little bit of nylon in it, but it's very soft. It's very affordable also, and I really like it, and they have so many colors. Um, and this one, um, yeah, really like it. I was so excited when I started to make it, and then, well, the classic thing happened. I made one sleeve, and then I can kind of already envision how it's going to look, and for some reason, I always think, like, the second sleeve, it's a bit of a... You have to be in a certain kind of mood, um, like be very sort of, oh, in Finnish there's this word called reipas, which kind of means that you're very, um, I don't know what's the English equivalent of it. Wait, let me Google it. Ah, <laughs> reipas, okay, it translates it to brisk in English. Um, I suppose you could say that. Breezy, dashing, brisk. Yeah, like somebody who's very up for the task. <laughs> uh, so I feel like you need to be in that kind of mood when you're gonna make a second sleeve. And I haven't been in that kind of mood for a while, but I think now I would be ready because now I've had like a chance to do some other projects. So I really do want to finish this one. And yeah, like one of the constant struggles, I think, when you get to do something that you love as a living. Um, so knitting, of course, was first a dear hobby to me and then it's become my work. And one of the challenges is just to find the time and to balance that creative joy and inspiration and getting to design new things, because that's really where I thrive and I love that. Just getting to see how an idea forms on my needles, something that I've been thinking about, and then I actually see it in front of me, yarn turning into a fabric and into a garment that I can wear. And I just find that endlessly cool and I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. But of course, when it's also then your job, um, sometimes I do feel like there can be a bit of pressure and um, especially when you then see people, you know, on social media sharing and you can start to feel like, oh, everybody else is completing so many projects. Or in my case, I look at other knit designers and I can feel like, oh, how are they so quick uh, and get their, their patterns out. Um, I'm definitely not a very quick pattern writer, um, just because, I don't know, I'm very thorough, I need to think things through. I'm at the moment actually working on the Pride and Pearls 
uh, cardigan. So this is absolute, well, definitely one of my proudest moments as a knit designer. Um, then the pattern uh, is being tested at the moment and I'm actually also, where is it? Uh, <laughs> have all my knit projects in different bags here. Um, I'm working on a second sample for a knit tutorial and also because I want to try out the pattern because there's been quite a bit of struggles just to try to make things clear because I often find um, when I start to write a pattern um, and I try to get the logic uh, of how to convey the instructions in the best and clearest way to other knitters. <laughs> um, often it starts out being quite complicated and then as you go through the knit uh, test knitting process where so actual people will test knit the uh, the pattern on, before it's finished uh, and they then uh, try it out and see if there's something that is unclear. So often it starts out being very complicated and then as the process goes you kind of simplify it, you realize like, oh actually you can repeat those things, you can say this in a different way. So that is what I've been working on and I'm trying to get the pattern uh, ready for next week and then the video tutorial a couple of weeks later probably so I'm not going to be able to I get well obviously <laughs> I only have the upper back so I'm not going to be able to make the full tutorial for next week um, but one thing actually when like speaking of kind of balancing work and creative passion <laughs> um, I actually want to say thank you to today's sponsor of this video which is Skillshare and you are maybe familiar with Skillshare. They are an online learning platform. They have thousands of creative classes and thousands of members as well. And I have been a member and taken lots of classes in creative writing, in photography, in video editing. And they have a really, really broad, broad scale of classes um, in animation, in graphic design. And well, my point being is that as I am preparing to have a little baby <laughs> in a couple of months, of course, I'm thinking about how to manage my business as I go on maternity leave. And probably there's gonna be like, maybe a period where I'm not gonna be able to work at all, but then hopefully I'll be able to maybe work a few hours here and there, or maybe one day a week. I have no idea, I've never had a baby before, so I don't know what kind of <laughs> big life change and how chaotic it's gonna be. And how tired I'm gonna be. And I actually found a really cool class on Skillshare by Peggy Dean called ChatGPT for Creatives. And it's really interesting because I've been interested in figuring out ways, maybe how to automate some things in my business and make some things easier. And of course, AI, like everybody was talking about ChatGPT like a few months ago. Um, and I'm kind of interested in it, but I really don't know how to use it. So this is perfect. They have these kind of classes on how to get organized and productivity and use tools like AI. Like I don't know exactly what it could do for my business, but I only watched a couple of modules and it seems so interesting. So it's basically she teaches how to give these prompts to like an AI tool like ChatGPT um, to maybe come up with like titles or headlines or maybe email campaigns or I don't know yet, but it seems very, very interesting. And I'm hoping it could maybe take some pressure off uh, as I go on maternity leave um, to just help me keep my business alive <laughs> as I cannot do everything uh, that I've been used to. If you'd like to check out this class yourself, I can highly recommend it and also highly recommend Skillshare because I've worked with them before and they just deliver really high quality content from so, so many different topics in creative areas. So if you'd like to try it out, you can click the link in the description below and the first 500 people who click that link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So go and check out the link in the description below if you'd like to try out Skillshare. All right, moving on from my Pride and Pearls uh, project. This one I am, well, I absolutely adore this color combination. I'm using actually three, three strands. So I'm using uh, Filcolana Alva which is like a really thin alpaca yarn together with two strands of Sunday from Sunday's Garn. Um, so this is a little bit like thicker uh, than my original sample. In my original sample, I used Crea Deluxe, uh, which was a new yarn for me. They're a Danish uh, yarn company. Um, and I used their silk mohair paired with their organic wool, number one, and I had two silk mohairs. Or is it, no, it's not silk mohair, it's like alpaca silk. 
I need to check. But uh, anyway, it's like this kind of fluffy yarn. <laughs> it's two strands of dough and one strand of their organic wool. And this is just so, so soft, because sometimes I feel like silk mohair can be a little itchy, but this one isn't at all. And I love the drape of it. So very, very keen to get, uh, well, that one, that pattern out, and this one also. Um, and I'm working it on four millimeter needles, which usually, um, like I like a five, like I'm a five millimeter, so that's a US eight needle gal, because then it just goes so quickly. <laughs> but lately I've been more into also like using smaller needles and I really enjoy it actually. And just the fabric and the kind of thickness and sturdiness of it. And of course I know when I'm gonna block this, it's gonna bloom out and relax. So <sighs> yeah, super, super excited about wearing that one. Oh yeah, one thing that I haven't shown you, where is it? Um, a finished thing, actually. So, the first time in my life I have knitted a slipover. And yes, I had a moment of where I was really into green, uh, but then the pink came back. Can you see? These are almost identical colors, which um, when I was in the yarn shop, um, so this one is knitted with Viking Garn Alpaca Breeze and then Viking Garn Kid Silk together. And when I was in the yarn shop, like that yarn, I just saw it and it spoke to me and I saw a girl on Instagram in a story, I can't remember who it was, but she was wearing a pink uh, slipover or knitted vest. And I just felt like I need this in my life. Um, and this went really quick. I knitted it on six millimeter. I think that's a US 10 needle. So very quick. I knitted it actually from bottom up and added these cables. And actually what happened was, um, so there was a little bit of like knitting surgery <laughs> that went into this project because I started it here from bottom up. Um, if I find a photo, I'll sh put it in here. I did an Italian cast on, which I haven't done Italian cast ons that much. I usually do like Italian bind offs. Um, and I forgot that you really need to go down a size in a needle because otherwise the cast on edge can become really sloppy. And that's exactly what happens. It was like really floppy and flirpsy. <laughs> and for a while I thought like, oh, maybe it's okay. Maybe it uh, won't bother me. But then when I had finished this, I realized I didn't like it. So then what I had to do was I went in with the scissor and I cut off the entire rib. And if you've ever done this, trying to then uh, salvage something, where, because I've started from knitting from bottom up and then to try to pick up stitches to go the other way. Um, if you've not done like any provisional cast on, so all these like lifeline things that you can do, because I didn't have that. So that took probably like three hours just to get that. But I'm so, so happy I did that. And then I did bind off, yeah, with the Italian bind off. And now I'm really, really pleased with how it looks. Um, and this one definitely gonna turn into a pattern. I really like it. I'm already thinking of other colors that I want to make it in. And also just because it's like such a quick project, um, little cable vest project. Also don't have a name for it, but yeah, that will come. Okay, moving on to some yarns. So actually the first yarn, because I've been uh, lately experimenting with some new yarn combos and one um, that I'm very excited about is I actually bought this in Stockholm. Uh, I visited my sister there last week and this is from Isagar, it's called Boucle. Isagar Boucle, so it's an alpaca yarn and then this one is Isagar Eco Soft. Um, I think this is like alpaca as well. Yeah, and cotton. These two together and have cast on. This is gonna be as well <laughs> a hood. I don't know, I really like like hoods at the moment or balaclavas, uh, some people call them. But I wanted like a really fuzzy, just like a very natural down to earth color. And one, this one I'm knitting also with um, six millimeters. So that's US 10 needle, just like a really simple one. I don't know when I'm gonna finish this. I was really interested just in this texture uh, fabric that it produces and to see what it will look like. So but these are like a new a new combination. I've never really worked with boucle yarn before, even though I've kind of seen it on the internet. <laughs> um, and it's been like a bit of a theme come, popping up. So now finally I get to try it out myself. So this is gonna be a little hood, but not sure when I'm gonna finish it, but. I think it's gonna be nice and kind of more like a, very, a more relaxed style than this Coco, Cozy Coco hood. This one is kind of more like tight fitting and this I'm envisioning to be a bit more kind of loose and relaxed. Another uh, yarn that I'm very excited to try out because I haven't 
work with that many hand dyed yarns, even though I have quite a lot of them. Um, but for some reason, I don't know, I just haven't uh, worked with them that much uh, lately. So this one, when I worked with Madeleine Tosh, um, I think it's called Merino Light or something like that, Tosh Light, um, and the colorway Horn. I got really inspired to do more uh, hand dyed yarn projects. So I put this one up from Wool Me Once. I believe this is a local uh, Finnish dyer. I think so. Um, from a new yarn shop called Autumn Yarns that I visited here. And I think I'm gonna pair this with one strand of Merino. This one is from Nutting for Olive. It's called Soft Row. So I think I'm gonna pair those together for maybe like a pretty simple cable knit is what I'm envisioning. Um, so maybe during like the holidays, uh, let's see if I'll get my other projects done first. I could do that. And then I have another one as well. Um, that I'm really, really looking forward to, which is, um, this is the new for Olive Merino that I picked up when we were in Denmark, in Copenhagen, a couple of months ago in the color Fennel Seed. And this color is just so nice. <laughs> and then I've been looking, because I also bought, uh, when I was in Copenhagen, silk mohair to go with it. But sometimes it's really weird. Like sometimes I feel like it's itchy and sometimes I feel it's not that itchy. Now, maybe because I'm pregnant, I'm like, very, very sensitive to itchiness. So I don't want anything itchy. And I find that the drops uh, alpaca silk or brushed alpaca silk is really non-itchy. That's what I used for this one as well. So I found the perfect shade uh, to go with this. So I'm really excited to try this one out um, and maybe make like a really just basically really oversized something. Um, I'm actually thinking maybe I should make, I mean, because I'm gonna have like a baby in a few months. <laughs> so I really, really try to think of making knit projects that are gonna be baby friendly. So I'm thinking maybe I could knit like a wrap, you know, that goes like this. I'm not sure, or something, or a cardigan. I mean, cardigan, so you can get, you know, if you want to breastfeed and things like that. And also doing projects that don't have silk mohair in them. Um, Cause I think that could maybe like be a little scratchy against the baby's skin. And maybe I also don't want to have that. So yeah. Oh yeah, okay, one more project. This is the last project, I forgot. This one is one I've had on my needles for a long time. This is just gonna be a beanie. Um, I think I think this is the Rebel Soul beanie that I've started to make, um, just like with a really wide brim in just a really, the like really softest rose color. I'm using, I think I'm using like some scrap yarns. Let me see here. Yeah, these are, I'm using three apparently. Strand. I think this is from Saya Wool, their silk mohair. I think this is from Sun is Garn, their silk mohair. Not their thin silk mohair, but their thicker silk mohair. And then I think this one is scrap yarn that was left from my dirty caramel sweater. So this is, I think this is Madeleine Tosh in the color Scout. I'm not completely sure, but this very, very soft rose. So this one, yeah, I should really work on this. This is really nice. I don't know why. It's, it's, yeah, it's sometimes a bit tricky when you have your knit projects, when you try to be organized and you put them in like small bags like this. <laughs> but then sometimes I forget them if I don't see them. And that's the reason why there's always so many knit projects lying around, because I want to see them, get inspired, remember what I'm working on. But yeah, at the moment, so I have one, I have two projects that are almost done. Yeah, this one is really almost as a three project that are nearly finished one that is really not finished. Oh yeah, and the Pride and Pearls cardigan also really in the beginning, and then the hat. Oh, and I forgot, wait, there's one more that I haven't shown you. Of course, <laughs> how could I forget the Wishbone sweater, which um, I'm currently filming the tutorial for. It should be coming out the week after this video releases. So if you've been waiting for the wishbone tutorial, it is finally coming up. I already have the pattern, but I've been working on this tutorial. It has taken me a bit of a long time, but now I'm this far, I've done one sleeve. I'm loving this chocolate brown color. It is so, so nice. And it's so nice to work this sweater uh, and it's so soft. And I'm working um, with, these are Knitting for Olive yarns. I can't remember, I think this is the color not brown, um, using two strands, well, it's a mess, <laughs> two strands of merino and one strand of their soft silk mohair. 
Um, yeah, this one, super excited about. I hope, now it looks kind of small, but I think once I block it, it will grow a lot. So I hope I can fit it with my, <laughs> with my belly when I finish it. All right, I think those are at least a lot of the projects I'm working on currently. I do have all kinds of projects that are in baskets somewhere, but it's so long ago that I cast them on. So let's see when I pick them back up. But these are the ones that I want to finish currently. Some of the projects that I'm thinking I want to knit. I definitely also want to knit more baby knits for the little baby. Um, but I'm trying to somehow be smart about how I use my time. So now still knit things for myself and for this channel and make patterns because I think the baby knits I don't have any experience with. So I'm not going to turn them immediately into patterns at least. And I think maybe um, once the due date is closer, um, so that means like February, March, um, I'll devote like some specific time to really knit for the baby. Um, and I have some projects in mind. Uh, and then I think I'll also be kind of go more into like a nesting mode and just uh, knit for myself. But now I still want to complete these and make the patterns for them and hopefully have the patterns um, almost ready before, before life changes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little knit and chat video and that you got some inspiration, uh, maybe for whatever that you're working on currently. I would love to know. You can leave a comment below and let us know what you're working on currently or what you're planning to knit next. Also, do come and say hi. I'm over at Kuteva Kika over on Instagram. I share quite a lot of behind the scenes and work in progress over there. And also, if you like this video, then please subscribe. Then you'll get notified every time there's a new video. Okay, I hope you're gonna have a lovely rest of the day or evening, wherever in the world you are. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.